G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going through my round 20 AFL tips and predictions. And in this AFL tipping video, I'll be featuring two special guests as part of one of my punishments in Mark and Shannon. So I've gotten Shannon before last year. So this will be very interesting to see how they both will interact and all of that. So just like last week with my mum, they'll be doing their tips at the end of every single time I do my tips. But before I do get into that, We've got round 19 tips to review, and it was a relatively simple round to tip. And I just had a look at mine, and I don't really know how I ended up on eight out of nine. First round on the Friday, I tipped the Bombers, but because I forgot to tip, I think they gave me the dog. So I guess I'll take that. It, it does make up for some of the tips I didn't get right previously in the season, which I should have got correct. Uh, Richmond over Hawthorne, I got correct. I, I kind of did want Hawthorne to win because it would have been better for St Kilda if they did get up, but I'll take the tip, I guess. Carlton, easy win over West Coast. Brisbane over Geelong. Sydney over Frio. And this one was technically the only game I got wrong, and that was put out to beat Collingwood, which was the best game all season, to be honest with you. It was only two points as well, so a little bit frustrating. It could have been a 9 out of 9. Then the Giants, the Ds, and the Saints have got right. I know in my video I tipped the Saints, and I thought I changed my I didn't change my tip, but I must have changed my tip. So I guess I will take it because I was never going to stick with the ruse anyways. I was always going to change it back. So I'll take an eight or nine, but it was a pretty easy round for a lot of people in tipping. Now for my big calls in the round, I did say in SNV Bulldogs that the Bombers would lead by 18 or more points in the first quarter. It wasn't as bad as it you sort of make it out to be because they actually were okay in the first, but they weren't up by 18 or more, so incorrect for that one. Richard me Hawthorne, I said that both sides would win two quarters, but it was the Hawks that won the first three and the Tigers' massive last got them the actual win, which was a bit surprising. I uh, then got my first one correct. I said that the Blues would score 140 or more, and I was at this game literally praying it would happen, and they ended up scoring exactly 140. Very, very glad that that ended up happening. In Geelong v Brisbane, I said that the Cats would score six or more goals in the quarter. That was a terrible one because it was a very low-scoring game, and I thought it would be a high-scoring one. In Collingham v Port, I said Nick Dacos would record 40 or more disposals. However, I didn't get that one correct. He only had like 25, so not his best game of footy. Freo v Sydney, I said Lance Franklin would score four or more goals. He did score three, so I was pretty close with that, needing two more to avoid the big calls for this week. The next game in Gold Coast v GWS, I said the Suns would be up in any quarter, but then lose the game. And they were up in the first and lost the game, so that was a correct one. Adelaide v Melbourne, I said there'd be six or less individual goal kickers for the Crows, and that certainly wasn't the case. They had a lot more than that. And the last game... I didn't really want this one to be correct, but at the same time, in a way, I did. Said St Kilda would score 11 or less goals during the game. And uh, what a surprise. We only scored nine. And the week previously, it was under 30 likes to someone called Blake Rintoll. He said, go to the MCG and go for the ums and say good call every call. Well, too bad I'm not doing that for you, mate. And uh, yeah, I'll take that. A week that I get to avoid them, I can catch up on a couple more. Obviously, this week, we've got Shannon and Mark on. They're doing their tips. Let's start off with round 20. Let's just get right into things. And first game, we got Collingwood and Carlton at the MCG. This will be a good game, I reckon. I'll be at this one, and I'm looking forward to it, because both sides at the moment, they're in some pretty good form, with five wins in a row, I'm pretty sure. Carlton, particularly, because we all expected Collingwood's form to be good. They've been good all season. But Carlton have managed to win... Five games in a row now by more than 50 points, which is an equal record. Now, the Blues in the first half against West Coast, they almost managed to record 100 points. Yes, whilst it was against West Coast, you can't take away the fact that they still managed to record that feat because it's not easy. Pe pe teams don't normally, you know, have the ability to do that. The fact Carlton sort of have been in the last few weeks is really good. And I think this one will shape up to be a really good game. I know the Blues do have a couple of outs heading into this one in Silvani Walsh. Might be a couple more after last week. And I'm not sure if they're going to be getting Chera back. I think they'll still have pretty good belief heading into this one with a good streak of five in a row. Whilst the Pies, I think after a really, really strong clutch win against Power last week, maybe they could be a little bit tight after that because they would have had to work a lot more than Carlton, certainly in that game, to uh, to get that win. I think, unlike the previous game between these two sides, the Blues will be the tie that starts hot, but you'd be very brave to be going and backing the Blues here. I kind of do want the Blues in a way to win, but not at the same time for St Kilda's sake. I think the Pies, like they always do, will get themselves back in the game in a bit of an arm wrestle, and the Pies prevail by 12 points. With a big call, the Blues lead for 70% or more of the first half. I think Colling will get it done by 34. I'll say the Dacos brothers combine 25 or more disposals. <laughs> it's not a big call, mate. Um, Colling would be by 24 points. Nick Dacos to get um, 30 plus disposals. And as you just saw right there, Mark and Shannon gave their tips and big calls. I eventually decided to not bother with the big calls because well, Shannon's bear time was so I didn't want to lose time with him on the call. It's um, the 
What punishment? That I have to do a footy tipping video with Mark and that. Well, can you do it tomorrow? No, it has to be done now. Right. Hurry up. That's bedtime. The next game we got on the Saturday, the Cats and the Dockers at GMHBA. The Dockers are $8.50 to win, which is just astounding considering they were... A side that finished fifth last year and beat them at that very venue. Yeah, this is a pretty simple tip given both sides' form. Um, even if this was at Optus, I probably still would be very leaning towards the Cats, um, even though the Dockers did win there early in the year. Yeah, the Cats are just too powerful right now of a side at home. And despite a fairly flat outing against the Lions, they still managed to almost actually win, just falling by 11. It shouldn't have been 11 points, but the fact that the Cats could play that poorly in only one good quarter against one of the best sides in the hardest ground almost to play and it's a decent effort I would almost say and uh, the Dockers on the other hand well they look pretty sluggish from the get-go and they kind of let Sydney do what they please early on in the game particularly I think that first quarter they conceded five or six goals and it's always first quarters that seem to be an issue for Frio especially at home like you want to get off that fast start not playing catch-up footy it's just too difficult always to, to win games you can't rely on that every single week yeah their injury wise are, are pretty poor right now the Dockers and it could get ugly right now because well look Paul Frey defence, Geelong at GMHBA, they could get back to their scoring best. We all know the Cats have a very strong knack for scoring a high score at GMHBA, so I think they should win well here, and I think they'll win this game by 57 points. My big call, Cameron and Hawkins, come on for eight or more goals. I think the Cats will just blow the Dockers out of the water and they'll get it done by 69. Geelong to win by 17 Five points. Now next up we have a game that could be really good and interesting. The Dogs take on the Giants. Pretty important game this one as well with the winner. I would almost say ceiling just about a top eight spot. Which is crazy to think particularly talking about the Giants. We'll quickly talk about the Dogs for starters. Well they seem to be back to their best against the Bombers on the weekend after a bit of an average first quarter for them. They certainly got on top of the contest led by I have to say, Mark Spontapelli, he was absolutely elite in the midfield, and they were just elite in the midfield, the Dogs. They won the clearances by 21, which is a huge amount, to be honest with you. The Bombers were pretty poor in that field. And the Giants, well, they made themselves work for the win a little bit after a pretty even, tight first half, but then they broke the shackles in the second and uh, yeah, blew the Suns away in a very comfortable win by 40 points to uh, break that Canberra streak of losses. And I think that was a bit of an overreaction at Canberra Street for loss as well, because you look at the games and the teams they lost to, they were all really top teams. Playing a poorish side, it was sort of almost definite that they were going to win, sort of the way things were going. I think the Dogs, though, they're suited to the conditions slightly more. They were really good against the Crows last time they played there, and I think they'll probably get the job done, but you can't write off the Giants, because they've just been winning games. No one really, in a way, have been expecting them to win. Yeah, the dogs, a toughish one to tip, but I think the dogs can win this one, and I think they'll get it done by 19 points. My big call, the Giants kick five more behinds than goals. Dogs to win by five. Dogs by 32. Next up, we've got at Metricon or Heritage, the Suns and the Lions, the Q Clash. It's the most lackluster of the state derbies, um, and this looks like a relatively easy tip again. The Suns were very disappointing on the weekend. They've shown signs in the first half that they were in the contest and I expected it to be that sort of game where they were going to be, you know, competing for most of it, but they did sort of give up in a way in that last quarter or last half. They didn't keep up with the pace of the game and it sort of shows their lack of maturity and lack of firepower that steps up. The only positive light I'd have to say for that game was Sam Collins. Or was it Sam Flanders? I think Benny King had a really poor game. Don't think he ended up scoring a goal. Brisbane well, they did what they needed to against uh, mostly flat cats outfit, we got to say. They were good in that last quarter. They finally wanted to uh, start trying, but it was a very flat performance. And I think a game that they should have won by a lot more, the Lions, particularly in the first three quarters. Unfortunately, though, that win will be a little bit dampened after Ashcroft ACL, which is very disappointing to see. Um, but in this game, you know, regards to location, the Lions get the job done all the time against the Suns. I can't remember the last time I lost to the Suns. It's always just an easy-ish win for the Lions. And I'm expecting the same thing. A relatively comfortable win. Put us into the Sun season once and for all. Because they're not making finals. Even if they find a way to win this. Uh, I think Brisbane win this one by 25 points. A big call. They'll win every quarter of the game. Brisbane. Brisbane by 60. Brisbane win by 40 plus. 40 points. Now, we've got another really good contest here. The showdown between the Power and the Crows. I'm really looking forward to this one. I really want to watch this and maybe stream it. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a huge game. Because at the moment, both sides... They're in a little bit of poor form. They've lost their last two, but they were very unlucky, you would say, on the weekend, fighting hard with close losses. Adelaide, well, they came back from a massive deficit. I think it was like 32 points, but the Crows just found something in them to uh, get back to the game, similar to the way they sort of got back to the contest against the Pies. 
and they almost pinched it in the end thanks to a few Taylor Walker heroics in that last kicking three and uh, having a really big say in that last quarter. Whereas Port Adelaide, you could argue that they were the stronger and tougher side, particularly in the contest, you could say, at home, but could not overcome a Pies turnaround. It's just really difficult now to see any sides holding on to a lead against Collingwood, no matter what the margin is. In this one, I am exper expecting another fierce contest and a very high quality game of footy. The showdowns normally are pretty good games. We saw a decent one again earlier this season. But I think in front of the Crows fans, since there is a Crows home game, I think they can do enough. They know that they're pretty much in need of a win here. It's almost essential for them to get the win. I think they can get it done, keep this season alive, despite a couple of outs, especially in, in Isaac Rankin. I think they can get it done here. The Crows, in a very good contest, in a bit of an upset, get it done by eight points. But big call, two sides combined for 200 or more points. Port Adelaide by 36. Port Adelaide to win by... Uh, three points. And the second game on the Saturday night, another pretty good game of footy here. A couple of close matchups this round that are going to be tough to tip. We've got the Bombers and the Swans. The, the Bombers, they really let me down on uh, the Friday night last week. And it was annoying because in my video, I was really you know, back in the middle. I was like, oh yeah, I'm such an advocate for the Bombers. I think they'll really do well this game. But then they just collapsed after quarter time with poor ball use inside 50 and just a very beaten midfield. They only kicked, I think, four goals after quarter time. Whereas Sydney, well, in a way, they were a bit the opposite. They looked the goods against a disappointing Frio side, particularly in that first quarter. And then there was a bit of a stalemate in a way after quarter time, but they still ended up kicking over 100 points. And it still looked like a genuine chance for the finals right now. I feel like the winner of this game will have a one-up on the other side in terms of the finals race. I, I know Essendon will still be, I think, above them on the ladder, but the form that the Bombers have been in right now has been poor, which is, say, contrary to the Swans. They've had a couple of wins in a row, and I just feel like they'll have another missed chance here at home, the Bombers. Just something tells me that they're not maybe as good as we think they are. Um, not saying that this will end their race to the finals, but this will be a very big missed opportunity, I feel. And the Swans, with the form they're in, they always finish off seasons really well. They get another win on the park in Bit of an upset, I reckon. Swans will win it by 18 points, and I think they'll win the clearance count by 10 or more. Essendon to win by 25 points. I'm going Essendon by 30. Now, I've got three pretty difficult games to tip on the Sunday. Not necessarily the greatest games, but three games that are tough to tip regardless. And the first one is Hawthorne and St Kilda at Marvel. I'm kind of glad in a way that the Hawks are playing their home game at Marvel because if this was at the MCG, geez, it would make it more difficult for St Kilda. I would definitely say the Hawks would be favourites. But it is a real danger game, another real danger game for St Kilda who are somehow still holding on to sixth position in the eight, which is a very undeserving spot for us because we're playing awful footy. The two sides on the weekend had completely different performances. I think for the most part, you have to say Hawthorne were more impressive on the weekend. It's just they didn't get the result. I mean, for example, Hawthorne, they played out of their skins against the Tigers in the first three quarters and... They just disappointingly faded away in the last, and they were up by as much as 36 points, which I thought was uh, very disappointing, the way they can drop that. Shows a bit of lack of maturity. They just weren't able to get it done in the big moments. They couldn't stop the Tigers' run on in that last quarter. St Kilda, on the other hand, well, they were deplorable with skills, ball movement, and pretty much everything for most of that game. Uh, we started okay in the first quarter, then it just became a, just a shit show, really, after that. We only scored one goal in the third and fourth. Pretty much perfect conditions under the roof at Marvel against North. It's just not good enough, but... Um, a strong last term after being down by as much as 17 or 16 of three quarter time gave us the win, which is a very similar game to the West Coast one in the way we won. I do see the Saints in this one playing slightly better. I think we can hold on to more of what we saw in that last with a few more glimpses in that last quarter, but I'm expecting also Hawthorne to be just as good. So it will be a tough one to tip. In a seesawing battle, I see this one being, I will back in the Saints here just because it's such a big win. And an important game for us to get the job done. We just need to win this game to just hold on to that sixth spot for one more week. And I think we'll win it in a very close game by a single point. My big call, there are nine more lead changes during the game. Saints get it done by 35. Thank you for the to win by nine points. Next up, we've got another difficult game to tip, to be honest with you. This is going to be the better game of the, uh, the, of the two. In fact, of the three on the Sunday. We've got our Richmond take on the Ds at the MCG. Both sides are in really strong form heading into this one. I think both have got three wins in a row at least. The Tigers somehow found a way to beat the Hawks, which just keeps their season alive because I feel like if they lost that one, I think the momentum would have just you know deteriorated and they wouldn't have really had much of a shot. Uh, but they were as, down by as much as 36 in that third. I looked at the scores at Carlton West Coast going, Jesus, well, I mean, it'll help St Kilda, thank goodness. And all the Blues fans around were really excited about that as well. But then when they found out the Tigers came back and won, they were all really pissed off and... 
I don't know how they managed to do it, but Lean Baker kicked the final goal in the final minute to be the hero winning that one. And uh, for the D's, it was almost a complete opposite outcome for them. They looked like they had the game won, sewn up in the third quarter, up by 32, doing what they please against the Crows. But then the Crows came back strong with a flurry. And the D's just had to hang on, and they did, and won it by less than a kick. So I think this, as I said before, should be a higher scoring game. They're both capable of scoring big. But you do have slightly more faith in Melbourne. I just feel like Melbourne normally do all right against Richmond. They normally get the job done as of late. So it'll be a close game, but I'm going Melbourne by seven. They'll come back from 20 or more points down to win, though. A big call. I think Melbourne's going to be too good. They'll get it done by 25 points. I want Richmond to win, but it looks like Melbourne might win that game. So, so you want to say Melbourne by four? Yeah, if Petrarca's playing. And the final game, we've got West Coast taking on North Melbourne. This is certainly the least significant one, probably of the whole season. However, in saying that, it, it could be close because of the, the where the two sides are at, 18th and 17th. First off, the Eagles, well, they were very, very embarrassed in that first half against the Blues. But credit to the Eagles for hanging in tight and not allowing the margin to blow out anymore after half time because it could have easily been as bad as the Sydney game. It wasn't. They actually won the second half and they kicked, oh, I think they kicked over 50 points in that second half. They were a very, very stronger outfit against the Blues, but that first half, they were as flat as I've ever seen. Whereas North Melbourne, well, I thought they were relatively impressive against St Kilda and they almost managed to beat us. I mean, we were extremely poor, so I feel like that was the only reason they were in the game. Some of their skills and some of the turnovers they made were shocking, not going to lie. So it was a, it was a terrible quality display of footy and they were... I guess unlucky not to win because I thought at times they deserved to win, but we had a better last quarter and they sort of dropped off to North Melbourne. So, yeah, a game that both sides could win. The two worst sides in the comp by far will finally see a winner unless it's a draw for the first time since round two, which is kind of crazy to think of that I have to tip one of these two sides. I'm going to lean a slight bit more to the Eagles, even though they've been worse for the most part this year, just because at home particularly... They do find a little bit of form. They're starting to find a slight bit of form. They weren't as bad against Richmond and St Kilda. And against North, I think they can actually see it as being a winnable game. So I'm actually going to tip the Eagles purely because it's at Optus. I think still North should in a way win. But screw it. I think West Coast will have a big day at the office and win it by five points in a close one. Oscar Allen kicks four more goals as my big call. I say we'll get it done by 40, but I'm not too confident. 40. 40. We're going to be North Melbourne by six points. Well, I don't know what Shannon's talking about. Mark certainly was the better one in that tip. So let me know as well also um, who you think will do better out of myself, Mark or Shannon. I'm pretty sure Mark and Shannon's tips are relatively similar. But guys, we will review the tips real quick. We've got the Pies, the Cats, the Dogs, the Lions, the Swans, the Crows, the Saints the Demons, and West Coast. So I'm a little bit surprised the odds for St Kilda are $1.73. I thought they'd be a bit lower than that. And as always, we'll see where I'm placed on my tipping comp. I think I've gone up a few spots now in 500th. And uh, for round 19, I know for a fact we'd have a lot of people that all scored a total of 9 out of 9. I'm not going to read them all out. Let's just be here forever. But Azalan was the one with the most with a score of 9 and a margin of 6. Now I've got a perfect margin. All right, well, I've scrolled through every single tipster and we have 249 people with a perfect score of 9 out of 9. That could be the most we've get, ever gotten any round. And, uh, let's go total score as well. Who's on top after round 19 with only five more home and away games to go? It's Oscar Tuchland with a 9 and a 123. It's Christian also with an 8 and a 123. Pacindu with 123. Uh, yeah, look at all the people that are on top have all got at least a score of 8 or 9. Jazzy Boy would be disappointed with a 7. Comment down your punishments for the week ahead of us. I have a few more that I need to get done like that dinosaur one. I just don't know what game to do it at, really. Like, I don't want it to be a game where it's a big one. For example, Carlton v Collingwood, I'm not doing it there. I'll be vlogging it and doing that footy card video as well. So let me know. I'll bring all my equipment for that game. We'll be giving away footy cards and asking people questions at Carlton v Collingwood. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you guys will be at the game, feel free to let me know on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video. All of that good stuff. And we'll see you soon in my next video. Appreciate it, guys.